Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and I want to start this episode by wishing you a happy new year, and I hope 2016 is everything you hope it'll be. In the last episode of this Dorado box replacement video, I talked about this being a two-part series. As it turns out, it's going to end up being a three-part series, and the reason being is, uh, in the first part, we talked a little bit about the, um, the process of removing the old Dorado box, um, actually seeing what the deck looked like underneath it, and removing all the uh, interior components that went through the ceiling uh, into the bunk area. In episode two, this episode, we're going to cover uh, how to rebuild or replace the box, how to sand it down, refinish it, cover it with epoxy to make sure it's waterproof, build a new frame that's going to mount to the deck, and allow extra water egress points so that the water that gets into the cow vent can ultimately distribute out uh, onto the deck and not leak down below into the bunk. Um, so we'll be covering all of those steps today. What we'll put in part three is actually going to be prepping the deck surface for remounting the Dorado box and ultimately how to bed and seal it. Uh, and then we'll have the ultimate test and that is does it leak or does it not? So uh, I hope you enjoy this episode and again if you do please do like our videos and, uh, and subscribe if you would. Thanks everybody. Let's see if it fits this time. Does it? Yep. Yes! I'm so happy. No more leaks in my room. Right? That's the plan, Stan. So instead of cutting this frame by small strips, what I'm going to do is under the Dorado box, I'm making this piece to fit in tightly. And you can see here I've drawn basically an outer frame all the way around the uh, inside. That's going to be the frame of uh, that mounts to the deck. I also am doing a V-shaped baffle right here. The thought is if water comes into that front cow vent, it'll run down the sides and we'll, we'll etch out a little bit of this so that it, um, it can run out the sides and then run out the back as well. So I'm gonna take all of this section in here and cut it out, and all of this section here, and then I'm gonna use the router, and I'm going to shave just enough off the bottom to go out the weep hole on the side. Time to drill a few holes and cut out the center. All right, we have the base I made out of uh, solid oak. We have the re-finished uh, Dorado box. And this is actually a spacer that goes between the fiberglass uh, interior ceiling and the drop ceiling and helps it provide the space required for the Dorado tube that goes down into the, into the um, cabin. So I'm gonna mix up a little bit of um, epoxy and we're going to put a couple layers of epoxy specifically on the base because I want that to essentially be waterproofed. Um, that's going to mount down to the deck and then the Dorado box will sit on it and it'll be screwed into the sides of it. I'm also going to put a layer of epoxy on the Dorado box rather than varnish. Um, we'll see how this works. I'm going to run a couple of thin layers of epoxy on it and then ultimately we'll put uh, varnish over it for UV protection. So, away we go. I like to use the West Epoxy System epoxy uh, I have a gallon jug of the resin and a quart size or so of the hardener. Um, I also like to use the pumps on the top of them that automatically dispense out the right, um, the right uh, mixture based on the parts. I believe it's three parts resin to one part hardener if I recall. But certainly check the instructions of the epoxy you're using. Um, and after I pump this into a small container, you certainly want to mix it for at least 60 seconds, maybe 90. What I'm doing is just putting a thin layer on this. Basically, I want to encapsulate this entire piece of wood into an epoxy resin so it becomes waterproof. Um, as this sits on deck, I want to make sure that we're not in a situation where uh, this piece of wood would rot over time. I mean, I guess eventually it will, but it should last a lot longer encapsulated in epoxy. I'm not going to put a thick coat on here, and especially not going to go on the outsides very thick because this is a nice tight fit inside the Dorado box. So I'll put a layer on it and then I'll sand it real smooth once it's hardened on the outside edges. Uh, these edges out here. Definitely want to do the inside portions of this though. Um, not so much on this side, but definitely on this side where water is going to come in the cowl vent. Um, and then this will be the channel that will run the water out to the sides. 
So I'm going to put it on a little thicker in here where I've done this cutting and routing um, just to make sure that any of those small cut areas aren't uh, ingress points for water. And these spots that are end grain, it definitely soaks it up a little bit more than in spots that's not. Again, put it on thicker where it's end grain here. Let it soak into all of those uh, capillaries or whatever they call it. So I'm now going to just do a, a light set of tipping here just to keep it fairly smooth. Probably spending more time on it than I really need to. It's going to be covered with uh, butyl tape on this side I'm painting right here to go face down on the deck. But I'm going to have it look good. And the practice will be good because I'm about to go to the Dorado box itself here in a few minutes and I want to make sure that does look real good. This is that outside edge I was saying. I don't want to build this up too thick here because it's going to make a, the joint between the Dorado box and this base um, even tighter. So I'm going to put a coat of this on and then I will come back with sandpaper when it's dry and just get it nice and smooth. So there's no issue with that. And I didn't make this out of teak. I did this out of just, uh, this is uh, red oak. Um, I just figure it's a good hardwood. It's fairly inexpensive. Um, and for what this is, covered in, in the epoxy resin, it will be more than strong enough for its duty. And you won't see it, so the boat will still have the aesthetic um, look of the teak and everything that's exposed. you got to be really gentle because it's sitting on just a couple of points here. Well, all I have to do is the spots where I had my fingers. go on very thin on this. What I'm looking for is um, waterproofing protection, but not necessarily UV protection. We'll get that from the varnish we put on the outside. And I could probably get a nicer finish on this if I used a better brush, but um, there's just no cleaning the epoxy off of these brushes. So I'm just using a chip brush. It's easy, disposable, and I can get the finish I'm looking for by sanding layers of the varnish once I have the varnish on there. I think that'll be good enough. So, um, on this bottom here, I do want to have, make sure it's, um, it's sealed in epoxy. Uh, it'll be a nice, a nice um, bedding surface for the butyl tape to attach to, and I will put a butyl tape on the edge of this as well as the base itself that I just did. And these little cutouts where the water is going to run out, I definitely want to make sure these are good and sealed in epoxy. This will be the point where water will always be making contact with it. I'm not going to do the entire box on the inside, just along the base here. Um, now that I just said that out loud, I'm not going to do any more than just this because that's going to make it even tighter on the frame. You notice I'm not doing anything with the screw holes here where they were before because I intend to uh, re-drill them out, countersink them, and um, I'm debating on whether or not I'm going to put plugs in them or not. I think I might just leave the um, countersunk stainless steel screws exposed. There's only going to be five of them, um, two on each side, one on the front, and I'm thinking that'll give me easier access if I ever need to work on this without having to refinish it all every time. So I think I might do that. I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but you can see the brush streaks in it because this is starting to to kick quite a bit. Kick's just the term that uh, you use when epoxy starts to set up. I was worried I mixed up too much of this at uh, one time as it was kicking, but i got to tell you, it looks to me like I may have a lot of extra here. There's a little bit of a bevel in here, and I am going to epoxy this because it means that water could potentially sit just a little bit there as uh, any green water would come over the deck and into the cow vent. Uh, wouldn't stay there for long, but for a few moments. Alright, put a very thin coat of epoxy on the inside of this opening as well. This is where the bronze base goes for the cow vent that it screws into, but it's a good tight fit, so I don't want to go too thick in there and impact that. This is getting pretty thick. It's a little hard to tip in at this point. probably should have started with the Dorado box because that's the one that I want to have the nicest finish. This stuff starts to kick the bristles from the chip brush at times will come off on it. 
honestly fighting a little bit with this just to, uh, to keep it thin enough and smooth. It's almost starting to pull the epoxy onto the brush as it goes as opposed to laying a little uh, layer down. This is the piece that goes in the interior between the fiberglass, uh, the inside of the fiberglass deck and the lower drop ceiling. Only putting this stuff on here in case some water does get in, it doesn't uh, leak into this wood. I'm even okay with this being a little bit rough. And like I said, this is nothing more than a uh, backing plate. It looks like I'm going to have a lot of extra epoxy, so I might even do the sides of it. Just as we'll do something with it. It's the next morning. We're going to check it out. I'm a little bit concerned. I don't have the oh, the mixture. I, don't, I take that back. I do. It's good and hard. It wasn't yesterday, and I was getting nervous about it. So this is it prior to any sanding or coats of varnish. It looks okay. There's a few spots where I don't know how well the camera picks this up. It almost looks like it started to, it started to pull away right in that spot. I kind of see it a little bit. But, listen... I don't know if things will be crawling around on their hands and knees on deck looking at it from a distance. It looks pretty. I mean, I can see the reflections of these little yellow pyramids and everything else, so it looks good. I'm just going to go down on the deck this way. The opening through the deck sits right here, so there's actually a brass piece that kind of comes up and will raise up about three inches. And then this is going to be over the opening where the cowl vent is, will go. And what I've done is, is, if any rain or green water comes in, the idea is it will run on this little V-shape here and I cut little grooves in the side so it'll just run right out. If water does happen to get beyond that, around the brass opening, there's another place for it to, to flow out the very back of the Dorado box. So I added two additional vents to this Dorado box that weren't there before, and this baffle. That looks pretty good. Not great. I mean, I can see on the sides, I can definitely see some runs where it wasn't completely hardened. And here I can see some places where it uh, pulled away. but. I'm going to, ooh, and I don't like those at all. Wow. And we'll get all those cleaned up. Those are still soft. That's concerning. So, away we go with some sanding. I started this with 150 grit sandpaper and a very, very light touch because the epoxy was still a little bit soft in those drips where it was um, somewhat heavy. So I did a really light touch because it gummed up the uh, sandpaper quite a bit. Um, I sped this up, obviously you don't want to just watch me sand here, but the idea was to scuff this up and get it prepped for additional coats of varnish for UV protection and a smooth finish. I hope you found this episode useful. Uh, again, like I said, there will actually be three parts to this particular series. Um, as we wrap up the, the preparation for the box itself, the next episode we will start to cover how to reinstall it, how to bed it, etc. Um, if you like our videos, I ask you to please click the thumbs up, the little like button, um, or click a subscribe, and please do share it with all your friends on social media and or any forums you happen to be part of. From the Sailing Vessel, Dream Chaser, thanks, have a great one.